Let's stand this morning and worship. Welcome to Lifehouse Fellowship. I was lost with a broken heart. You picked me up and now I'm set apart. From the ash I'm born again. Forever safe in the same hands. Follow you to come and worship the king today amen revelation chapter 3 verse 20 says behold i stand at the door and knock if anyone hears my voice and opens the door i will come into him and eat with him and he with me how many of you want to dine with the king this morning come on now i've got two i have two scriptures for you this morning now many of us just stand at the door and we don't hear the knock but can I tell you this morning he's knocking and all you got to do is with childlike faith reach down and open the door there needs to be a great expectation 
expectation in your heart this morning that says, I got to see what's on the other side of the door. Now, let me tell you why Jesus says to come like a child. When I was little, my parents had gone to get some clothes and bring them back because we were staying with some family friends. And they were coming down the road and I saw them. And I began to run down the fence line screaming, Mommy, Daddy, because I was excited to see them. Do you know the king wants you to come like that? Expectancy to say, the king is here, the king is here. I can't wait to worship him. Now let me tell you what happened to me. I got about halfway down the fence line and a great big St. Bernard came and grabbed me by the head and pinned me to the ground. Can I tell you this morning, there's an enemy and he's trying to rob you of what God wants to do in your life. He's going to keep you from trying to open the door to see what's on the other side. Don't let the enemy devour you. Don't let the enemy stop you. Come on. He already tried to stop you from getting here this morning. He's already tried to keep you from opening the door this morning. Matthew chapter 18 verse 3 says, learn this well. Unless you dr dramatically change your way of thinking and become teachable and learn about heaven's kingdom realm with the wide eye wonder of a child, you will never be able to enter in. Whoever continually humbles himself to become like this gentle child is the greatest one in heaven's kingdom realm. Come like a child this morning. Open up the door this morning because guess who's on the other side? The king! Let's shout to God this morning! Come on, put your hands together. Come on. Till I met you. All right, I got excited and my mic cut off. I was breathing but not alive. And all my failures I tried to hide. It was my tomb. Into your glorious day, you called my name, and I ran out of that grave, out of the darkness, into your glorious day. Chains break at the weight of your glory. I need a 
shelter. I was an orphan. Now you call me a citizen of heaven. When I was broken, you were my healing. Now you're
Then you may take your seat. If this is your first time with us, please slide a guest card near you. You can take your card to the Connection Center to pick up a special gift, our way to say thank you for worshiping with us today. Real Women Ministries meets this Monday at 7 p.m. at Lifehouse. Join us as we continue through Proverbs, the Passion Translation. We are real women, real talk, and real fun. Each Wednesday night, Pastor is focusing on leadership development at Lifehouse. Kids and youth meet as scheduled, and the adults begin promptly at 7. Bring your Bible and notebook and make a commitment to grow individually and corporately. 
Today is the registration deadline for the Men of the Mountain Retreat. The retreat is in Red River, New Mexico, September 13th through the 16th. The cost is $285 per person for the conference and lodging. We are excited to host Evangelist Woody Robinson at Lifehouse. Sunday, September 23rd for two services, 10.30 a.m. and 6 o'clock p.m. Regular kids ministry will be provided during the morning service and for infants through age five during the evening service. Life groups are happening all around Midland and Odessa throughout the month. Be sure to pick up a directory at the Connection Center or you can find details on the app or website. We have a new way of connecting with our church family. <laughs> Don't worry, you won't be in a group text getting 50 messages in two minutes. You will receive updates, reminders, and special messages from Pastor Jeremy. Simply text CONNECT to the number 432-287-1030 and follow the prompts. We cannot wait to connect with you. From salvation to baptism and partnership and leadership, we're all in a process of growth in our Christian walk. We all have the next step. What's yours? To find out, visit the Connection Center today. In just a moment, we will receive our tithes and offerings. To give securely with your mobile device, text LHF to the number 77977 and follow the prompts. You can also go to lifehousefellowship.net or simply use an envelope provided on a chair back near you. The best way to stay up to date on the happenings at Lifehouse is the Lifehouse app. You can listen to sermons, check the events calendar, and so much more. Be sure to allow notifications so you can receive the latest updates from Lifehouse. Praise God. Praise God. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I love this church. I really do. I mean, who else can say they've got a uh, music minister that's been eaten by a St. Bernard and survived? I wish I could say that. Maybe that's why I could use that for an excuse why I lost my hair. We know why he lost his now. <laughs> you had told me five years ago that I would be excited about going to church every Sunday morning. I'd called you a liar. But uh, I get excited about coming and worshiping God, and I'm excited about worshiping God on this part of the service. You know, this, this week, we've been de- you know, my wife went through some surgery, and then we've been dealing with the renovation, and we had had some personal issue hit. And, and uh, not too long ago, we'd had some friends that had had a similar situation that we really poured out to. And um, as a matter of fact, I, I, I feel like we were pretty significant in helping them get through that, that storm. And Lisa and I were pretty disappointed whenever we, we um, kind of poured out, not indirectly, we weren't asking for any help or anything, but we, we had shared our circumstances and, and, uh, and, and not really with any expectation at the time, but as everything grinded through, we found ourselves murmuring, you know, we did this for them, and they never even came back and, you know, even offered and blah, 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 blah. You know, it, it, it's a shame that sometimes when just on what we're going to talk about, what I'm talking about this morning is and God blesses me with some content, but sometimes it comes with a lesson, right? And, but it reminds me, too, of what my granddad used to always say, when it came to favors or doing good deeds, it's like a stream. They run downhill. They'd always say, streams run downhill. They don't run uphill nor to favors or good deeds, and that's okay. Because God slapped me to remind me, and that's what Lisa and I talked about. I said, you know what, whenever we helped them and we poured out into them, we were honored to be able to do that. We did not do it with an expectation of them to return anything back. We weren't doing an account uh, or had a little favor chart on our AR account system, right? We weren't doing that. We were pouring out. Matter of fact, they're probably busy helping somebody else downstream, right? Who knows, but it was, a, it, was a, it was a reminder that sometimes, <clears throat> you know, we need to put ourselves in check on why we give and what we do. You know, whenever we do something for somebody, expecting something in return with a motive 
or that, that's an implied obligation. That's like a contract with somebody, right? That's not a heart of giving. You know, when I was in sales, in the steps to success, we had a, one of the steps was, they call it a, um, they call it a gift of obligation. And on the way to the desk, we'd walk them to the Coke machine and we'd start putting money in the, hey, what kind of drink would you want? And, and, and we, they didn't, we, they, we would give them a drink, right? And, and they, they called, we were, we were exploiting the psychology of reciprocating, right? People feel like they got to do something for you when you do something for them. So by buying a Coke, a lot of times ensure they'd go through the next part of the process. So it's a little bit of a manipulation, right? <laughs> car salesman, yeah, car salesman. It's a hard thing. 2 Corinthians 7 says, So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. There is no accounting when we're giving or helping others. Your heart is to be in the right place. Matter of fact, when we give, we're giving out of gratitude. We're honoring. We're worshiping. It's out of love. Could you imagine keeping an account of of your your parents for what you've done for your children? And at 30 years old, you send them a bill. Can you imagine? Holy cow. (laughs) We, we, We do that out of love. We do it out of love, right? You know, with man... With man, we, we, when we do something, that we can rest on the fact, though, based on his word, we can rest on the fact that we can expect return of blessing. Because God tells us, and not with man, when we're giving with men, we don't give, again, with the heart of, hey, I'm, I've got a faith. Like Godfather, someday I'm going to come to you with a favor, right? No. We, 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 we do it out of heart. But with God, we can. Matter of fact, he tells us. He tells us. Now, still, our heart needs to be out of the place, in the right place. But we can have peace and lean on his promise in doing it. There is a security, there is a peace that knowing that God's taking care of us. He tells us many times. He tells us 2 Corinthians 9, 6. But I say, whoso sparingly will also reap sparingly. He who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. And it must be pretty important because he even says, test me on this. It's the only thing he says, test us on. Malachi three ten says, Bring all the tithes to the storehouse. There may be food in my house. Storehouse, by the way, is the local church. They've established that in the New Testament. That there may be food in my house and try me on this. Says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour out for you such a blessing, there will not be room enough for you to receive it. When it comes to helping others, well, so, what, so when we help others, there's no blessing in that? Sure there is. In Matthew 25, 40, Assuredly, I say to you, inasmuch as you did to the one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it to me. Yeah. So from a heart of giving, from a heart of gratitude, from a heart of worship, we give, we love, we honor. And we have peace in knowing That, yeah, we might not get a return blessing directly here. That's going on down the river, on down the stream, like granddad used to say. But we look upriver, and here comes a pouring of blessing. Declare with me today in prayer. Father God, today I choose your promise, your principles that you set a long time ago. I pray that I can be a good steward with what you have blessed me with right now. Lord, I pray that I may be sensitive and open to a calling to fill with my resources. Lord, I worship you today with my giving. And I pray this seed takes root in this ministry, this church, that this seed plays a part in adding to your kingdom, breaking chains, loosing bonds, slaying giants of addictions, resentments, and anxieties, mending families, God, reconciling marriages, healing the sick, and bringing peace, joy, and thanksgiving in your deliverance. Lord, I declare a protection over our current finances. Lord, I declare shaken, pressed down, and overflown return a blessing in a way that only you can deliver, Lord, in Jesus' name. Ushers, you may serve the people.
the gospel. We're going to be looking at the gospel of Mark. In fact, we're going to be studying the gospel of Mark through this, through this series. And, and so if you discover this process with me, you're going to, through, this, through this series, you're going to discover with me the process of faith. The process of what it's going to take to get us from being artificial to being the real deal. And so there's some choices we've got to make. In your handout today, you've got to make a choice between God rule or self rule. God rule or self rule. In Mark chapter 3, 33 through 35, Jesus is, he's here teaching in the synagogues, and he says, who is my mother? Who are my brothers? And then he looked at those around him and said, these are my mothers and these are my brothers. Anyone who does God's will is my brother and sister and mother. And, and, and so, in other words, those who allow God's rule in their life is related to me. The idea is here is, is that those who take this Bible, come on, God's instruction for living, those who take this are people who move from, from, from just knowing about God to knowing to who God is. They, they've used the word as their final authority of their lives. There's a lot of people that will say, well, if Oprah said it, if Dr. Phil said it, well, then it must be true. Who's the doctor? Who's the other doctor that tells everybody how to live and eat? And a Dr. Oz. Everybody, man, Lord, goodness. Maybe I need to call myself Dr. Oz Jeremy, I guess. I don't know. The, the, thing, the thing what I'm saying is we would rather hang on their words. My point is don't, those are good. We can apply those to our lives. But, man, the, the firm foundation is your word. It's the Bible. I, I love it. You know, Bible, basic instruction before leaving earth. I love it. And you know, and really, we've made this hard, and we don't need to make this scripture hard, but if you're basing everything of your life outside of the word of God, you're going to fail. And you're going to end up, you know, goodness gracious, how many times have I chose <clears throat> something in life that <clears throat> was a little cheaper than the real deal? And then when I got to use that thing that was a little cheaper, that it, it gave out on me. It broke. It wore out. I was like, man, I should have spent the extra $10. Right? That's why we got to build our lives on the word. God rule or self rule. See, when I build my life on the word, I'm, I'm saying, God, I want your authority in my life. And, and I want the authentic and real deal. By knowing and doing the will of God, we're moving from self-rule to God-rule. But something has to happen. And we know we have God's will if we're going to live God's will. And, the only, and that only happens when we begin to explore the book. Amen. Jesus invites us to live the exchanged life. In Mark chapter 8, 34 to 35, it says, If you try to keep your life for yourself, you will lose it. But if you give your life for my sake and for the sake of the good news, you will find true life. Amen. I want us to notice a couple of things in this verse. Jesus makes it clear that we can't be followers if we're following our own selfish ambitions. In fact, he says that following his rule means shouldering a cross, which is symbolic language for being willing to follow his rule to the point of death if, if, if that is what it comes to. What does that mean when he says take up your cross 
and follow me. He's saying, lay down your will and take up my will. Lay down your way of thinking and take up my way of thinking. Amen. There's a lot of people that think they're going to have an argument with God when they get to heaven about life. And let me tell you, you're not going to be able to speak. So go ahead and shoulder the cross of Christ and say, God, I want your will in my will be done in my life. I want to lay down my will. I want to lay down my thoughts and my way of doing things and take up your way of doing things. Amen. You know, life's priorities is a great, a great thought here about taking up and shouldering the cross of Christ. When's the last time God, God was first? Well, God is first. Well, is he? Is God first? Life's priorities, God first? God number one, numero uno. Is God number one? I can't answer that for you. Because I'm not going to stand in front of the king for you. You're going to stand in front of the king. And you're going to have to give an account. Well, I'm going to just tell him how it is. No, you're not. There's a lot of people, I've been hearing that a lot lately. Well, I'm just going to let God have it. Oh, yeah? What, what planet are you from? You see what I'm saying? See, God rule says, God, less of me, more of you. I decrease so you can increase. And I'm going to take, I'm going to take this cross and I'm going to die to myself daily. You know, the second thing we have to choose between is repentance or retreat. Repentance or we retreat. Change. Just go ahead and put change there. There are some people that refuse to change. Well, I've done it this way all my life. Well, well continue, to, continue to walk that way then. If that's what you want. But I don't desire that for you. Neither does God. Authentic Christianity leads a person to run to Jesus. Fake Christianity leads us to run away from him. And let me explain to you what I mean by that. In today's Christianity, there's a big problem. There, the divorce rate among Christians is just as high for non-Christians. The instances of spousal and child abuse are also very similar. I could list other statistics today. Uh, but you, can, the dramatic, you would think there would be a dramatic difference between the two, but there's not much difference. And that's so sad. Here's the problem. The church of Jesus Christ, for the most part, has forgotten the lost art of repentance. Repentance of godly sorrow, of recognizing that we sometimes are, 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 are off track and we need to get back on track. When's the last time you said, oh, God, I'm so sorry? That's a good indicator. Even in the smallest of issues of life, just saying, God, forgive me. Forgive me. I, I didn't do that right. When's the last time you said that? God, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. You know, even, in, even if you think you're right, just saying humbly, Father, forgive me. And one of the things that makes an authentic Christian stand out is that they feel guilty when they do something wrong and they seek the Lord's forgiveness. While we must teach, and, and, I'm, and I'm a big proponent of mercy and grace, thank God for his mercy and grace, uh, we have to understand and we must teach and live out lives that are committed to seeking the Lord's will and Lord's face when we've done something wrong. When, when you know, my goodness, 
Oh, I've been in here so many times at these altars saying, God, forgive me. God, I missed it. I didn't do it. I should have done it, but I didn't. Forgive me. Yeah, even your pastor. Don't look at me like that. You see, there's a, when, when are we going to come back to repentance? Well, I'm above that. No, 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 no. Repentance, a heart of repentance. You know, I want to I live in pursuit of what God has for me. But many times people retreat instead of repent. And I want to be a person that's pursuing repentance. Mark chapter 1, 14 and 15. It says, when Jesus went into Galilee to preach the God's good news. At, the, at last the time has come. He announced, the kingdom of God is near. Turn from your sins and believe the good news. Here's the twofold message God is wanting to bring to us today. We need to turn away from our sins. That is, quit committing them. Amen. Turn, turn to Christ. And at the same time, we need to believe the good news that Jesus has died for us. And for those that are living this fake Christianity, this synthetic Christianity, all sw sin is swept under the rug, and conviction never plays a part in stopping them from any type of behavior. I don't want to be that guy. I don't want to be that person. There's a major problem today, and what we need to do as individuals and as a church is to begin living lives of righteousness, right standing with God, following the example of Jesus. Amen. You know, the third thing we have to choose today is genuine faith or imitation faith. Genuine faith or imitation faith. It's always fun to talk to little kids and man, I have the best time because I get to find out a lot about you parents talking to your children. But sometimes it's tough because they ask me some hard questions. But great thing about them is their level of faith. And Brother Matt talked to, talked to us a little bit about it this morning, about having we pursue into God's presence and come into his presence like children. What, what little child does not believe 100% of their heart that God exists? Which of them does not have a faith that would blow almost every one of us away? If we were to do a comparison in Mark chapter 10, 14, and 15, let the children come to me, don't stop them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. I assure you, anyone who does not have their kind of faith, will never get into the kingdom of God. Oh, my goodness. Matt, was you preaching my message this morning? It's good. We got to come as children. You know what was so fun this past Friday when, when all the doors were locked around here and uh, we were all done with our stuff? Guess what us as a staff did? We played tag in the sanctuary. Oh my gosh, I about fainted. We had a great time in here. And Kat just had to tag Pastor over and over and over and over. The fastest one on our staff. And I left here going tired and knees wobbly and legs like noodles. But I thought to myself, when's the last time a 43-year-old played tag? <laughs> or running in the park a lot and fell? <laughs> Me and Matt and who else was with us that day? We, we, we're up here in the front. I said, let's have a race. I said, back in the day, they called me Twinkle Toes, White Lightning. <laughs> and I was 20-some-odd pounds heavier then. 
And I took off on the starting line, and I got about five yards, and I trip. I hit the ground, and I think there was a Richter 2.8 on the, it, it registered on the earthquake Richter scale, and I hurt for months. <laughs> Needs to say Matt won that race. Childlike faith. When's the last time you played? When's the last time you had some fun? When's the, you know, Christianity, if it's hard, you're doing it wrong. It's supposed to be easy. My point here, guys, is this, this childlikeness doesn't make us silly. It makes us open. It doesn't make us unwise. It just means our eyes are wide open. And you, you young marrieds that have kids, I'm going to tell you, relax. It does get better. It's not so hard. Thank God my kids are out of the house. <laughs> Almost. But the point is, is this. I think sometimes as parents we forget because we're so dogmatic about making financial decisions and making it all work. We forget the love and we forget the childlikeness. Remember your children. It's all going to come together. You know, I was with Willie George the first of the year. I said, I said to him, I said, Willie, what would you say to a a pastor that's fairly new in, in, in teaching people and pastoring people. He said, Jeremy, this is what I'll tell you. Don't sweat it. You're going to get it. And I thought to myself, only if he only knew. If he only knew. Those are the most, some of the wisest words I've heard. He said, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in my 60s now, and, and, and all my, my, um, my estimation of the Hebrew and Greek language and able to put all the things in the Bible together, it didn't come overnight. It come over time. Don't sweat it. You, you know, Lance, you and your family blessed me yesterday those pictures at the tech game. I thought, yeah, taking the kids to the tech game, raising them right. <laughs> then I see Jesse and all their Kansas City garb on over there. <laughs> but did you see my car today? I was flying the Dallas Cowboy flag. Yes, I was. Yes, I was. <laughs> Where's the child likeness? Oh, and the Pittsburgh Steelers are being represented back there in the back. Goodness gracious, let's, let's come to the altar and pray. <laughs> this is what we got to do more of. Child likeness. You know, this coming week we have a men's advance. And we're going to Red River, New Mexico. We have a great time. We fly fish. We get on four wheelers and rev up the engines. But we also have a great time around the Word of God. There's something about that child likeness. And if you haven't been on a vacation yet, you need to go on vacation. And you need to teach your grandkids how to do a cannonball. You need to teach your kids how to do a belly flop. Come on. <laughs> My point is, is this. Unless you come as a child. Unless you come as a child. Quit being so grown up. Relax. 
You know what I don't want in this church? Religion. I don't need another push a button, pull a lever. I don't, tr- I don't need to try to get God's attention. He's right here among us. And he's just among us as with us smiling and grinning and talking about football. He's just among us. This is just as holy. Sit, think about this for a minute. This is just as holy. What we're going to do up in the, on that mountain is going to be just as holy. You know why? Because we're doing it together. When we're two or three are gathered, he is right there in our midst. It's just so think about it don't sweat it parents don't sweat it it's going to work out no the fourth thing we got to choose is discipleship or desertion and i've been on a journey this year starting 2018 I said, I don't want 2018 to be the same 2017 was for me. 2018 is a year of new beginnings. And we've been saying it. We've been saying it and saying it and saying it. And another thing we know is it's a year of jubilee. Jubilee. The year isn't over. Do y'all understand what happens at Jubilee? Jubilee is pretty, pretty significant when it comes to the lives of the Jewish people. But we've been grafted in. And we've been, we've been in a year of Jubilee. That means all things restored. No more debt. Well, maybe I'm in debt. Well, the year ain't over. Discipleship or desertion. I haven't said, Lord, I want 2018 to be a year for me that is like no other. I want change. Not only physically, but I want change spiritually. I need Holy Ghost boldness. I need to do some things a little bit differently. And so in order for me to do that, God, I am going to set aside some time where it's just me and you, where I say nothing, and I just sit in your presence. And when you say something, I'm going to write it down. And when you lead me, I'm going to follow I don't want to be the same I was. I want change in my life. Even pastor has to change. And I've had people come up to me and say, what has happened to you? You're not the same dude. What happened? I drank some go-go juice. Everything's a drink around me in this life. But I don't want to be the same. And I I said, Lord, disciple me. You know, discipleship means disciplined. I'm disciplined. Disciplining my flesh. I went through a fast not too long ago. And my flesh was crying out, feed me some food. I was like, no. When's the last time you fasted? When's the last time you said no to yourself? When's the last time you said, no, I'm not going to watch that on TV or on my phone? When's the last time you said, I'm going to put this week, I'm going to put 30 minutes before I go to work where I'm just going to sit in the presence of God with my Bible in a notebook and pursue Jesus. 
There's a lot of people that don't want to be a disciple. So they'll, so they'll desert and leave the flock. And remember how I started the, the service today. The love of many will wax cold in the last days. Don't be that. Make sure you're in pursuit. Well, I'm just in a relaxed mode. No, don't, please. Have a childlikeness about you, but be in pursuit of God. You see, because I want to be a person living on the edge. How many people have you known in your life? And, and I've seen it. I prayed for them. I, I've, I've, uh, <laughs> I've prayed and prayed and begged people. Because I could see in the spiritual realm that they were right at the edge of blessing. And all they had, and really you could just tip them and they would fall over into the blessing, into the fullness of God. So for stuff they had been believing for all their lives, you just knew in your spirit that all they had to do was just fall over into it. But, but because of decision and because of their, they, did, they were tired, they deserted the faith. They left. They went another direction. You did little, little, little right there. Little, 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 no, go, go, go. And they turn and do this. I've seen so many people do that. Guys, these things will push you. If you're a disciple, if you come in a childlike faith, if you have genuine faith and you're pushing toward the things of God. You say, I'm going to be God-ruled instead of self-ruled. Man, it's going to push you over into his blessings. It'll push you. You received it, didn't you? Yeah, it's yours. It's yours. It'll push you over into the greatness of everything he has for you. How many you know God has something big for you? How many of y'all believe that? Okay, just five of you? How many of y'all believe God's got something big for you? Every one of you should have your hands up. Because he says, I've got great things planned for you. I've got good things planned for you. Because I'm a good God. I'm a good father. And this is what I do. He said, you who are evil know how to give good gifts to your kids. How much more? Exceedingly, abundantly, above all you could ever ask or think. Ephesians 3.20, it says it. He will do better for you than you could do for yourself. Some of you are going to get it. I want you to email me and let me know you got it. Mark 2.14, it says, come be my disciple. Jesus said to him, so Levi got up and followed him. So today I'm calling you. Come be Jesus' disciple. Get up and follow him. Amen. You know the, the fifth thing, evangelism or evacuation. I'm talking about people that, living on the, people that live on the edge. You either evangelize or evacuate the call of God on your life. And every one of you are called by God to be a voice of God. When's the last time? Y'all remember that top five card I gave you not too long ago? Did y'all write down anybody on it? Did you put some names on that card? Have you been praying for them? Have you been speaking to them? Have you blessed them lately? Have you got them, bought them a Coke? Have you, have you taken them to dinner, bought them some groceries, maybe filled their tank up with gas? It's the goodness of God that brings men to repentance. When's the last time you got your tank filled? Well, when I did, it was a good thing. I'll never forget there were times in our lives where we needed God to come through. And we would show up. And there would be bags of groceries on our doorstep. When's the last time you were a blessing to somebody? When's the last time you took it upon yourself 
to go out of your way to be somebody's answer. I'm talking about evangelism, not just talking the word. How about being the word? Not just, not just living it, but live it, having God live through you. Not being a reservoir, but being a river. Come on, somebody. You know, Brother Hagin would say, don't shout me down because I'm preaching good. <laughs> say amen or oh me. We're talking about evangelism. It's not just getting on a, a street corner with a megaphone and condemning people to hell. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about living the word. I'm talking about being the word. Every day, you need to understand that people are watching you. They're looking at you. I've missed it. Maybe you've missed it. Maybe you've been on the job and you said something. Ah, wish I wouldn't have done that. You know, God, he understands. He wants to give you another opportunity. Ah, oh, man, God, I didn't do it. I knew I deserted what you told me to do. God is faithful and just. To forgive you of all your sins. And to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. That's who he is. That's what he does. Be. Be a disciple. Don't desert the plan of God. Be a disciple. Well, you don't know what I did. God can restore. He can restore your witness. Don't you know he's a big God? Well, people know what I've done. He can restore. David, great example in me. Mm. I, I don't know about you, but I know me personally. I've prayed for the sixth thing or seventh thing. Six, yeah. We have a choice to be a dynamic church. Or a dying church. Up until now, each choice that we've had to make has been a personal one. While all of our choices affect others around us, this one more than any takes a team effort. I've often said that here at Lifehouse is we're either moving forward or we're moving backward. There's no middle ground. We're either fired up or burnout. out. We're either moving up or going down. We're either growing deeper or we're growing more shallow. One way or the other, there's no middle ground for the church of Jesus Christ. We should all be a church where the partners have chosen real Christianity. And I'll show you a church that's not dying. I'll show you a church that's dynamic. You show me a church where the partners have, have chosen real Christianity, and I'll show you a church that's, that's, that's enlarging the kingdom of God. And today, it's not about denomination, because denominations are dying. 
Denominationalism is dying. It's about a relationship in a church that's in pursuit of the one true God. In Mark chapter 7, 6 through 8, Jesus, he describes the religious Israelites in this story. And he says, you hypocrites. Isaiah, Isaiah was prophesying about you when he said, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far away. Their worship is a farce, for they replace God's commands with their own man-made teachings. For you ignore God's specific laws and substitute your own traditions. What an indictment. What an indictment. How would you have liked to be on the other side of that rebuke? No, thank you. I don't want to be there. While we have a long ways to go here at Lifehouse Fellowship Church, we're moving in the right direction. Aren't we, church? We're going in the right direction. And while we're not perfect, we're making progress. And while there are still some mountains to climb, we're going to keep on climbing. And as you do everything in your power to live out the real Christianity, and I'll do everything in in my power to do the same, you know what? God is going to do everything in his power to make sure we succeed. And with God on our side, we can't lose. Amen. Let's all stand. Worship team, go ahead, come on up. I, I, want, I want to leave you with one scripture. It says, let not the wise men glory in his wisdom. Jeremiah 9, 23 through 24. Let not the mighty man glory in his might. Nor let the rich man glory in his riches. But let him who glories glory in this. That he understands and knows me. That I am the Lord exercising loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these I delight, says the Lord. The goal of single-minded devotion is to know God. And remember that the final judgment will be measured ultimately by how much we have come to know the Lord and allow him to work through us. We've got a choice, don't we? And each and every one of you, wherever you're at on this scale of Maybe I answered the call to be, have, having genuine faith and loving like a child, but maybe I've missed it being a disciple. Every one of us could say we could come up, couldn't we? Every day's a proven day. Every day's a day that I've got to say, God, have your will, have your way in my life. Make a fresh commitment if you have to. That I'm not going to live to self-rule, but I'm going to live to God rule. I'm going to be a disciple. And I'm going to have authentic faith. Today these altars will be open. If you come down here and you're praying, know that there's going to be a prayer partner that that will be standing behind you. It's going to put their hand on your back as, and, and they're just going to pray for you. And if you need more prayer, you just get up and turn to them and they'll pray for you. But we don't want to invade your, your time with God because we know that this is where exchange takes place is at the altar. So allow God to transform you and know that you're loved and know that you're in a safe place. You can let your heart be free to God and let Him know 
what he means to you. I love you, church. Let's go to the throne room.
inside so heaven is real and death is a lie i want to hear voices of angels above singing as one sing it out hallelujah holy holy god almighty great i am who is worthy none beside Sing it out. Hallelujah. Holy, holy. God Almighty. The great I am. Who is worthy. None beside me. God Almighty. The great I am. The great I am. There is no power in hell or any who can stand before the power and the presence of the great I am, the great I am, the great I am, the great I am, the great I am.
Worthy of every song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Jesus, the name above every other name Jesus, the only one who could ever save Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you, oh, we live for you, Lord Holy, there is no one like you There is none beside you Open up my eyes in wonder Show
team <laughs> there is there's is an intimacy that takes place during worship that that you just can't get any other way you get so close with God there is there's an exchange like pastor always says there's an exchange there what you lay down there is taken and what you offer is taken too and you receive your blessings there the only person in the way of your blessings is yourself <laughs> You have to step out and you have to receive them. And those moments of worship is where you get them. And I don't know who this word is for, but I'm not gonna stand in the way of anyone's blessing today. For anyone in this room that's feeling like they don't have a purpose or that they messed up, let me tell you something. If you still have a pulse, you still have a purpose. Joel 2.12 says, you can still return to me with all your heart. I don't know who that's for, but that's been on my heart since Pastor brought it up during service saying, raise your hand if you, if you believe that you have a purpose. Every person in this room has a purpose, every single person, and you can't mess it up. For you to think that you can mess up the, the plans that you have for your life, let me tell you, you're not that powerful. <laughs> only God is, and only God can tell you what your plans are. <laughs> well, praise God, what a, was it, what a service this morning. If you are a first time guest with us, I wanna welcome you. Um, fill out your guest card that's on a chair back near you and take it to the Net Connection Center in the back. We just wanna honor you and thank you for coming. We've got a gift for you and Pastor Jeremy and Tanya would love to meet you there. Just a few announcements, life groups, if you're not in one yet and you're looking to join one or you're not sure where you might fit in one or how your schedule might work out, stop by the Connection Center. Miss Amy's got some life, house direct, um, life group directories. It gives you the times, the dates, where it's at, the numbers of the people in the, that's leading the group. So you can get all the information there, work out things of schedule, work, childcare, all that good stuff. For the people that are going on the Men of the Mountain Retreat, do not forget to stop by and see Pastor Jeremy at the Welcome Center after service today to get all the details about um, when y'all are meeting and all that good stuff there. Today is the deadline for the Men of the Mountain Retreat. If you're still interested, you can talk to Pastor about it. I'm just gonna pray over everyone real quick and we'll be dismissed. <laughs> Father, we thank you for your presence this morning. We thank you for the words spoken into our lives this morning, Jesus, that they're planted on, on fertile soil and that they begin to grow and show blessing and prosperity in our lives, Father. Lord, I just pray that 
as we go through this week that we allow your will to be done, not our own, but yours, Father. Lord, that you give us the strength to pick up our cross daily so that we may decrease in our own lives so that you can increase. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Remember, church, great days are here and greater days are ahead. You're dismissed.